Welcome to the E Academy. In today's episode, I will continue the subject of slimline motion detectors. I will explain how to configure the settings of the LED, indicating different detector states on Slim PIR, Slim PIR PET, Slim Dual, and Slim Dual PET models. I will show you, for example, how to set the LED color to indicate alarm or trouble. By default, all slimline detectors signal an alarm or trouble by the LED glowing blue. This light color can be changed. The Luna and Pro devices offer seven colors to choose from. In the Slim PIR, Slim PIR PET, Slim Dual and Slim Dual PET models, however, the LED indicator of an alarm or trouble can produce one of four colors. The slimline detectors have the function of the motion detection circuit supervision and constantly monitor the supply voltage. If any irregularities are detected in the motion detection circuit or the supply voltage drops below 9 volts for more than 2 seconds, a trouble will be reported. This is indicated by activation of the alarm relay and coming on of the LED. In addition to the alarm or trouble, the LED can also signal other events. The LED will be flashing for 30 seconds during detector startup. In addition, in dual tech detectors, Motion detection by a PIR sensor or a microwave sensor can be signalled by different colours. I will now describe how to configure the LED settings on Slim PIR and Slim PIR PET detectors. The procedure is the same for these two models. Before I start, the detection power supply must be turned off. First thing, I am placing a jumper across the pins marked as LED. Now I can turn the power on. After a while, the LED starts flashing red, which indicates startup. Here is an important note. When looking at the Slim PIR and Slim PIR PET detector PC boards, you can see no difference. So what to do if you are not sure which model of detector you are dealing with? In such a case, turn the detector power on. If the LED is flashing red during startup, it is the Slim PIR model. If the LED is flashing green, the model is Slim PIR PET. To enter the LED color selection mode for alarm or trouble indication, remove the jumper from the LED pins within 10 seconds of the detector power up. The LED is now flashing the color indicated by the PIR potentiometer. This color does not have to be the same as the one used up to now to signal alarm or trouble. The potentiometer setting which is closest to the leftmost position corresponds to the first color, which is red. If I turn the potentiometer slightly to the right, the detector starts flashing the second available colour, which is a shade of green. I keep turning right. Now the detector is flashing the third colour. As I mentioned earlier, blue is the colour that is set by default in all slimline detectors. After setting the potentiometer closest to its rightmost position, the LED starts flashing white, which is the last of the available colours. Now, I set the potentiometer, for example, in the position corresponding to the red color. To complete the procedure, I place the jumper back across the LED pins. The detector has remembered the section, and from now on, it will signal an alarm or trouble using the indicated color. Configuration of the LED color in the Slim PIR detector has been completed. I remind you that the LED color in the Slim PIR PET detector is to be set in the same way. Now I will proceed to the dual tech detectors, i.e. Slim Dual and Slim Dual PET. The procedure for configuring the LED settings is the same for these two models. The Slim Dual detector power is off. I place a jumper across the LED pins and turn the power on. After a moment, the LED starts flashing blue. Much the same as in the case we discussed earlier, the Slim Dual and Slim Dual PET detector electronics boards look identical. To recognize the detector model, note what is the color of the LED flashing during startup. In Slim Dual, the LED is flashing blue. In Slim Dual PET, is flashing purple. To enter the configuration mode, remove the jumper from the LED pins within 10 seconds of the detector power up. The LED is now flashing the color currently selected using the PIR potentiometer. The color of alarm or trouble signaling in dual tech detectors is set in the same way as in the PIR detectors. So I set the PIR potentiometer to the position corresponding to the selected color. In the Slim Dual and Slim Dual PET detectors, 
The LED signals an alarm when both sensors detect motion within less than three seconds. The LED can also come on when motion is detected only by one of the sensors. The colors are assigned permanently, purple for the PIR sensor and green for the microwave sensor. If motion is only detected by one sensor, the LED will glow the right color for about three seconds. Now, I go to the potentiometer marked MW. I can use it to set whether the detector is to signal motion detection by each of the sensors. Setting the potentiometer to the minimum position will disable the signaling. The LED will only be on in the case of alarm, i.e. when both sensors detect motion. However, if I set the potentiometer to the maximum position, the signaling of motion detection by individual sensors will be enabled. This is how the detector works with the PIR and microwave motion detection signaling disabled and enabled. To save the settings and complete the configuration, I place a jumper across the LED pins. If the jumper is not placed, the configuration mode will be automatically terminated 20 minutes of the last operation, and the changes made will not be saved. To sum up, in the Slim Jewel and Slim Jewel PET detectors, we can use the PIR potentiometer to set the LED color when the alarm or trouble occurs. On the other hand, you can use the MW potentiometer to enable or disable signaling of motion detection by each sensor. It should be noted that the purpose of potentiometers I used a while ago is to adjust the sensitivity of individual sensors. Therefore, it is recommended that you begin the process of configuring all detectors we discussed today by setting the LED lighting pattern so that you do not need to readjust the sensitivity of the sensors. Finally, important information relating to all slimline detectors. When the jumper is placed over the LED pins, the event signaling by the LED is enabled. However, if you want the LED to be off, remove the jumper from the LED pins. In this situation, the LED will be permanently off and the person observing the detector used in the system will not be able to determine whether motion has been detected or not. It is worth noting that the LED lighting can also be controlled remotely. Removing the jumper and connecting the detector LED terminal to the common ground turns the LED on. Disconnecting the LED terminal from the common ground turns the signaling off. So for example, if we want the signaling to only be turned on during service work, the output of 38. Service mode status type should be connected to the LED terminal. You can also connect the 114 zone test status type output to the LED terminal. If this is the case, the LED indicator will only be turned on during the zone operation test. And that's the end of this episode. I invite you to the next eAcademy meetings. See you soon.